If you can picture me to be blonde, a bit smaller, and with loads of charisma like this lady here, then you're all in the right mood to listen to Martina Temples' story. When Martina was 17, she was in third grade of secondary education and she really liked science and mathematics. And she was really good at it. So when she went to university, it was obvious she would choose to study philosophy. She didn't really like philosophy, but she worked real hard and she succeeded. In her professional career, it didn't take her very long to get into the IT business and she loved it from the very first moment. So when people asked her why she didn't choose to study STEM, she first thought it was because of the boys in her class. They all chose to study STEM, but to be frank, they were not that hot and a bit boring. Sorry. <laughs> or was it because she was afraid to fail? Was she afraid to take risks? There had to be more to this story because she was not the only girl in her school to love science and mathematics, to be good at it, but not choose to study it. And things have not changed a lot since she graduated. Only a minority of the girls today choose to study STEM. A lot of data confirm this. If we look at the STEM monitor, they focus on the amount of pupils and students in STEM, and also on the amount of girls in STEM. The results of the first update show a slight positive change, but there is still a lot of work to do, especially if you look at the amount of girls in technical and vocational education. If you look at data from VDAB, on the other hand, you see that STEM jobs are dealing with a huge lack of workforce. A lot of these jobs could be done by women. So what is the real issue? Why do girls not choose to study STEM? And why are most of the STEM jobs taken by men? Recent studies have shown there are different reasons. I want to focus on three of them. First of all, there is a mismatch between the motivation for STEM and STEM at school. Secondly, there are differences between boys and girls. And the third reason is there is a mismatch between what girls want to be and what we expect them to be. The Rose study, which is the study of the relevance of science education, reveal important information to help us explain the first two reasons. We see here that both boys and girls show positive attitudes towards science. And this is not a surprise. If you look at young children, they are very eager to discover the physical world around them. They're curious to find out how things work. So you should expect them to be very interested in science at school. But the Rose study shows us a completely different story. Somehow, we fail to keep this motivation and this curiosity alive. Especially the girls lose interest. The following answers might help to explain this we see that school science does not open their eyes for new and exciting jobs. School science does not show the importance of science in our way of living. The result is that many young people are not interested in school science. Let's look at the differences between boys and girls. The Rose study shows us that the differences are not about motivation and capacity, the differences are about interests and context. Most boys are interested in the technical, mechanical, electrical, spectacular and even explosive aspects of science, whereas most girls are interested in health, medicine, beauty, the human body, ethics and aesthetics. We also see that most girls agree we should care more about the environment. A lot of girls also believe that they as an individual can make a difference. And they also want to work with people rather than things. If you put two and two together, you can figure out that science at school and also engineering and technology should take these aspects into account. STEM at school should focus more on the impact on our daily lives. 
We have to teach our girls how to use STEM to make the world a better place to live in, to make the lives of the people around them better. And we should do this in every aspect of their lives, not only at school. Because girls are brought up in a world in which they are taught to be nice and look like this, perfect mothers and wives. Whereas we teach our boys to be brave and adventurous. So we teach the boys to be brave and we teach the girls to be perfect. These images have a strong impact on girls and the way they grow up. When they reach the age of 10, most of these girls have already decided that science and technology is only for boys. Fortunately, many women are transforming the fields of science, technology, engineering and maths and also transforming the way the public thinks about these fields. Not only women, also young girls stand up for themselves. Like seven-year-old Charlotte, who wrote a letter to the Lego company. She wrote, Dear Lego company, my name is Charlotte. I'm seven years old and I love Legos. But I don't like that there are more Lego boy people and barely any Lego girls. Today I went to the store and saw Legos in two sections. The pink for girls and blue for boys. All the girls did was sit at home, go to the beach and shop. And they had no jobs. But the boys went on adventures. They worked, saved people and had jobs, even swam with sharks. I want you to make more Lego girl people and let them go on adventures and have fun, okay? Thank you, Charlotte. And it worked. Lego is now designing Lego girls who work in a lab and who go on adventures. Other companies have taken their example. The Swedish company Top Toy, for instance, was one of the first to come up with a gender-neutral catalogue in which the stereotypical behaviour is encountered. And Goldie Blocks designs toys for girls so they can discover the joys of building their own toys. Another inspiring story is that of Reshma Sarjani. She was 33 years old when she did something brave for the very first time in her life. She ran for Congress. At that moment, she realized if she had been a man, she would have done this much sooner. So when she found out she was not elected, she took up the challenge to teach girls to take more risks and also she taught them to code two skills we need for society to move forward. She founded Girls Who Code, and she says, to truly innovate, we cannot leave behind half of our population. So we have to teach girls bravery and not perfection. This message is also shown in popular TV shows, in which women take the lead in solving crimes just by using their scientific and technological knowledge and skills. Often young girls I know talk about Dr. Bones, Rizzoli and Isles, and Abby from NCIS. Cool. What all these women have in common is that they show girls that they can do the exact same thing as boys and be successful at it. They show that girls can be confident in practicing science and technology. Also nearby we can find these women. We have Marianne Verhelst, she's a professor in microelectronics, KU Leuven, and she's also the house engineer in programs like Schuur van Schere and Het Lichaam van Koppes. She's the one who explains all the scientific and technological aspects behind the stunts that are shown. She's also the co-founder of Innovation Lab, where young people and their teachers learn how to use science and technology to come up with solutions for disabled children so they can use computers just by using their eyes. There is Lene Desili. She runs an organization that offers trainings for welders to prepare them for their future jobs. She also organizes special workshops for girls. And then, of course, there is Martina Temples. She has always been fascinated by science, technology, engineering, and math. Her professional career is all about STEM. She works a lot with people who are trained in STEM, and most of them are men. So yes, she also wants to stimulate more women into STEM. 
how does she do this? She's involved in different initiatives. She's the first one who brought Coda Dodo, Dojo to Belgium after a trip to Ireland where she was first introduced to the concept. It is amazing to see how quickly young people learn how to code. They start with a visual program called Scratch, but soon they develop and they move on to more complicated systems. What we experience with girls who learn to code is that they lack self-confidence at first because most of them are overwhelmed by the boys. But if we provide them with a safe environment, these girls thrive and really enjoy coding. They learn it is okay to make mistakes and retry. They learn it is okay to take risks and take things into their own hands. And what we learn from that is that guidance is often a key word in getting girls to choose what they want to do. This is also something we see when Martina coaches young women in STEM jobs. They often struggle with the same issues like responsibility, confidence and standing out in a male-dominated world. When these young women are supported by women who are more experienced, they are able to find their own way. Being part of a network is very important, and this is exactly what Martina does. She has set up a network for women in ICT, and she encourages every ICT woman she meets to join. It's a very informal structure, and they keep in touch both online and face-to-face. They exchange experiences, know-how, do's and don'ts. And as Peter Hinsen says, the network always wins. So some good advice we can all use. As chairwoman of the STEM platform, Martina is also responsible of giving advice to the Flemish government. The STEM platform is a group of 16 individuals who are elected for their specific skills and specific backgrounds in order to advise the Flemish government for the implementation of the STEM action plan. What we focus on is STEM for all and STEM for experts. Our society is evolving so quickly that every individual needs some basic STEM skills just to be part of the society. We're also facing huge challenges such as climate change, energy supplies, health, mobility, digitalization, for, we, for which we need a lot of people with knowledge and understanding of science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Especially girls are concerned with these issues. So it is our responsibility to guide these girls into their specific STEM careers. It is our job to raise their awareness, their confidence and their capacities. Every woman in this audience and beyond should talk to girls and young women in their surroundings. So please talk to your daughters, talk to your nieces, talk to the girls next door. It's our job to inspire them, because to be inspired is great, but to inspire is incredible. Thank you.